Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna be chatting about Sunlight's HBLC as well as Science C in regards to how much reading there is. Because I think especially with a literature-based program, it's kind of hard to gauge like how much reading there will be in a day. It's hard to know like, can I fit this into my schedule? Can I fit this with all the math and all the other things we are doing? And so I find these videos to be super helpful and super practical. And so I've actually made them for all of the levels we have used with Sunlight. So that is HBLB and Science B, as well as I just made one a couple weeks ago about the new K, the intro to world cultures, as well as Science K, and then the old American history. So go check those out if you are researching right now, which I'm researching curriculum right now, and see if maybe this will work for your family. But basically in this video, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you like every page. I'm gonna show you every resource in a day that you can expect for HBLC as well as Science C. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. So like I said, we are looking through our resources for Sunlight, HBLC, and Science C. But first, I do need to say a big thank you to Sunlight for sending me all of these resources this past year. It has been such a blessing for my family so I always wanna say thank you to Sunlight. And I also wanna mention that I do have a link down below in case you're looking at Sunlight. This gets you $10 off your first order, which is $10, so that's pretty nice. So anyway, with all that out of the way, let's chat first about the program. So a little basic information. Like I said, it's HBL, History Bible Literature C, which in that case, it is year two of world history. It's geared towards eight to 10 year olds or third to fifth graders if you wanna kind of have an idea of age ranges and stuff. So for my kids currently, about halfway through using the program, I have a newly turned 10 year old and an eight and a half year old, and it's been working really well. I would say it probably works better for my 10 year old, but I'll get into that when I do my review videos at the end of the year. So be sure to be subscribed if you are interested in kind of how it worked out for us. But those are the age ranges and that's the topics. And then as for other resources that I probably won't talk about in today's video is some of the extra enrichment things like the hands-on history kits, which we love. I have a video dedicated to that, as well as just the science kits and the science experiments. There aren't videos for science C as of yet. I wish they were because we really do love the science experiment videos, but that's okay. We still enjoy the science and the experiments. So yeah, that's about all I had for intro stuff. Let's just flip around so I can show you like literally every page. Hey everybody. Okay, I flipped you around. And now I am on to week 22. So like I said, this is the next week we are going to be doing. And I wanted to show you kind of a blank week because if I look back on my schedule here, I write in my instructor guide quite a bit. I just usually mark down if we've skipped anything or what day we are doing different assignments. And so let me just take you through a day. I'm actually gonna take you through two days just to give you kind of the full exposure to the different resources and things like that. And like I was saying, I really do think it's helpful to see how much reading is in every day because it's one thing to just see a stack of books. It's another to try and anticipate how long that will take you. And so I hope this style of video will help you anticipate some of those things. So let's start with our first subject, which here is Bible. So like I've mentioned before, when I go through the sunlight instructor guides, the subjects and the books are listed here on the left-hand side. And then across the top are the days of the week. And then obviously here is the kind of week overview. And so like I said, here's the Bible. And for HBLC, there are actually quite a bit of books involved in our Bible section, starting with a parent reading and student reading. And so for this, I honestly just bring my Bible, which is this one, and I will read from there. And so in this case, we're doing Judges 18 chapter 18 and reads down here and then across to here until you get to 19. So it's not always just a chapter. A lot of times the chapters are broken into sections or there are some chapters that are skipped altogether. But so far this year, I love the fact that it really has helped tell the story. Like, yes, we skip some stuff, but not too much. And what we do skip seems very appropriate for these age levels. So anyway, that is what I would read in the morning. And then I would shift it to my two older kids and they both have their own adventure Bible. And so I'll go to their section, which they are reading first Samuel 31. And so that starts here. I do love these Bibles cause it does have some extra did you knows, 
but here's 31 to there and it actually finishes out the chapter. And so this is what I would have them read. Typically when I do this, my son has no problem reading and sometimes he'll just read a bunch of it. My daughter still needs my help and she struggles, which makes sense because she is on the younger end of the age range. And so that is what we would read together. And sometimes he'll read, she'll read, and maybe I will read a section just to kind of keep it flowing. Because as you know, sometimes when you have the readers that are struggling to read the words, they lose on the context. And so having me read some of it also helps out on just kind of understanding the story. I turn the page, but you'll see here in the instructor's guide where it says parent reading and student reading. So this is for the whole week. I love these sections. It explains why we're skipping Judges 19, which you might have had that question when you saw that on the grid. And it's just mentioning the fact that it's some really horrific passages of scripture and to skip it with your kids, especially at these ages is my guess. And Sunlight actually does come with a Discoverer's Bible, which is a very similar Bible to what I showed you for my kids. It's like a Bible for early readers, which is what this is. And since I already had those, they really wanted to use their own Bibles. But I'm, I would have been perfectly happy with the Discoverer's Bible. Okay, and then it does go on to memorization. So let me go scoot us back over here. And so in this case, this week, we are memorizing Proverbs 18, 9. And I always try to remember to write it on a note card and I stick it in my Bible so that it's all ready to go. And the other thing I have been doing a lot this year is using the MP3 download for the senior word here. And it, I just have it in my Google Drive on my phone and we'll play it and that oftentimes helps. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes the songs are not catchy. Other times they're super catchy and my kids really like it. That's memorization, so that's reading and memorization. And we also have this book this year, which I am really enjoying. And how it is set up on your week is you take the first two days of the week to read the chapter and the second two days to go through the conversation guide. So here's chapter 21. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly how much there is reading if you were to read it word for word. That is a very valid option. It's really dependent on your kids. I found that I've had a little bit more luck pre-reading it. I'm not sure if you can see this, but in other chapters I have marked what I want to say on what day, and it helps me kind of stay organized. So I will definitely read this ahead of time. So our question for this week is, was Jesus's tomb really empty? So it always starts with kind of a little bit of a story or context that the author gives, and then it'll start kind of going through the different topics. So first things first, it talks about was Jesus even buried? So it goes through here, and you can see that this book is littered with scripture. So you could spend way more than a week on this if you really wanted to deep dive into all of this. It has all of the verses throughout these chapters. And then it talks about crucified people not buried in the Roman Empire. It talks about lack of empty tomb details in 1 Corinthians 15, but was the tomb empty with three different points and a lot of different scripture. And then the key points here and then a conversation guide. So you can see if you're going to spend the first two days on this, that's how much reading it would be. And you would just have to break it up how you choose. You could literally just break it up in half, read half and then read the second half and then go into kind of talking about it with your kids. Again, it's all dependent on the age of your kids, but this is a wonderful resource, but definitely does take a little bit more time in the Bible section of our day. The second section is history and geography. So if we're just doing day one, you can see that there's actually only one book for this first day of the week, and this is the book. So it's the children's history of the world, and it says we're reading chapter 72. It also has a timeline sticker, timeline suggestions, and some map points to look at. So let me show you what's all in this chapter first, see how much reading there is, and then we'll go into the notes in the instructor's guide because that is really where a lot of the help is. So we're on chapter 72 and it's entitled Red Cap and Red Heels. And so here's that first set of reading there and then a whole page and another whole page with just a small picture and then right here. So you can see it was one, two, almost four full pages of text to read. That is the reason that there is only one thing on this list. So then if you went to your instructor's guide, I'm gonna zoom back in because this was that first day. It has a first big paragraph for you to kind of read as a teacher because you can paraphrase that. Some things to discuss afterwards. Here's your timeline figure. So there's only actually one sticker to put in and that's the 30 years war. There's one that you could write in. There's Louis XIV here. And then here's a bunch of map points. Sunlight comes with these maps that are part of your instructor's guide, and it'd be at D3 on map three. So you just, that's map five I'm showing you here, but you could obviously look for map three, which is this one, and do the coordinates and find France. 
basically. Or you could look on your globe. Or you can pull out your big markable map, which we actually usually do two of those things. Sometimes we'll find it on the globe and then have them find it on the map. And I'll hang this map on the wall. I actually have binder clips to just put it on the wall when we need it. And then it says, map the nations involved in the 30-year war. Place a P on the Protestant nations and a C on the Catholic nations. So that's a great idea as they're learning about this to kind of see who's on whose side. So there is a lot of things to work with. There's a lot of depth in this day of history. But like for instance, on this second day, I'm just gonna hop over here to show you a different day of history. It would involve three additional resources. It would be a spread in the Usborn Book of World History. It would look into the country of Indonesia on the windows of the world. And we really enjoy this book. It's probably one of my kids' favorites. And so that's a whole section on Indonesia. And then the Geography Sons book, which I usually just pull up the son on my phone. I go to YouTube and look for Geography Sons. And then we look for track 16 of Southeast Asia, which is this spread right here. And so here's a little song. And then you would follow along on the map. And you could definitely take this further by copying it and coloring it and doing a lot of geography that way. And so there's definitely a strong geography component to HBLC, is to be going through all of these things. Okay, so that's more of your history and geography. So we saw that for the day, but if you're looking at this first day again, we have down here in read alouds, is here's the read aloud for the week. It's actually, we're starting a new one. So it's the intro and chapter one, as well as there is a timeline figure and a map point. Now, the important part of that is the timeline figures and the map points are on here. So these are the discussion questions for the read aloud, which are found in the back of the instructor's guide. This is not tucked in week 22. I always pull this out and I always tuck it in my book for this very reason, because sometimes in my big instructor's guide, it shows me that we have some things to look at. And so I would look on day one and see what we actually have to put into not only our timeline book, but some all of the different geography, like where are we talking in the world? And I love that that's always done at the very first day, so we can really set the stage, really understand maybe what this book is gonna be about. And this one's called The 21 Balloons, and we're reading the intro in chapter one, like I said. So let me show you actually how much reading that is. So here's the introduction page. So that's one, two, three, four, and a little bit five, and another picture. So really it was only four pages. Oh wait, and chapter one. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 pages. So you can see that is actually a decent amount of reading that you are reading to your kids in their read alouds. So this is usually why I save this book for over lunch or over snack or even in our nighttime reading if we are falling really far behind because it's a decent amount of reading and then there's also a decent amount of help in the discussion questions a lot of cultural literacy because you can tell that this is an older Newbery medal winner but it's an older book and it has a lot of words that they might not understand I don't always go through them all but sometimes I will keep this kind of next to me as I'm reading. So if I run into a word and I'm like, I wonder if they know that, I can look over here and see a good definition. And then there's some really good discussion points. And again, there's all the map work and stuff. And so that's a little bit into the read aloud. And then you can see it's not quite done because in HBLC, you also have Aesop's fables and your poetry. I personally do this all in one day. We do a special like tea time, treat time sort of thing. And we read all of our poetry and all of our Aesops. But I'll show you if you were just gonna work yourself vertically down a day, how much reading that would be. So you would go to The Wolf and the Goat on page 56. And again, I always keep the discussion questions tucked in the book. And a lot of days they don't have anything, but this is day 85. And nope, they don't have anything. Tomorrow there'll be a little cultural literacy, but really there aren't that much in here. You just get to read the story here. The wolf and the goat goes down this side up to here. And I do love here in italics, there's always kind of the lesson. Oftentimes I'll ask my kids like, what do you think that one was about? And sometimes they have no idea. Other times they can kind of give a pretty good answer. And then as for poetry, so the poetry for this level is 104 poems of whimsy and wisdom to delight children of all ages. We've really liked these. So we're gonna be going through icicles and the thawing wind on page 55 today. One thing I really do like about this book, this poetry book, is it's really pretty. It's got some really fun illustrations, but we're only reading this page. 
So you can see it's really two short little poems to read. I love that this past year they updated at least this level to include notes on the poetry. And that's just nice because sometimes poetry it makes no sense to me. And it's nice to kind of have a little bit of things to discuss. So that's what the poetry looks like. So you can see that was a whole day starting with all the Bible reading, the talking with your kids about Jesus, memorizing the scripture, and then that big chunk of history with all the discussion points. And then down here to our read aloud and poetry and Aesop's. So you can see it varies throughout the, the week, but anytime you have this big children's history of a world chapter, you tend to have less with the other reading. So that is what history Bible literature looks like. Now, like I said, I'm going to also be bringing you through our science. We love the sunlight science and I just tuck it right here behind my history in my big working binder here. In this case, most of the read aloud books are up here and then it references what activity sheet questions are needed for that day. And then it always has your experiments and they typically have the experiment on the fourth day in the five day program, which is what we are using. And so I'll just take you through one day and show you how much reading and what level of questions we're talking about. So it looks like at the beginning of week 22, we're finishing off this book. So it's the magic school bus and the electric field trip. And we're going to page 32 to 48, which is a decent amount. So I zoomed out because these are typical magic school bus books and there's a lot of information on every page, but my kids still enjoy these. I feel like there's enough things to kind of stop and take note of that it's interesting. So here's this page to read and then this page. You can see about how much text is on the page and then how much is in the diagrams or the figures of the page. And then this page, so that's three spreads, four spreads, five, six, seven, and then this fun game here at the end, which actually I think my kids would really like that. And then it ends here with some other things we want to learn about electricity. So there, that was quite a bit. I already forgot how much I was saying, eight, eight spreads about. And so it's a decent amount. I feel like these days we are reading this kind of a book take longer for science than say if we were doing a DK Did You Know Science here, which is just one spread, which I'll show you really quick what that looks like just because it is slightly different and it's nice to see kind of the differences. So on that kind of a day, we would read just this page, much less content in my opinion, which is totally fine because some days we'll need to double up. I'll never double up this kind of a book, but I might double up my days on this kind of book. And it's nice to know that ahead of time that these are a little bit shorter, but yet both of those days do include activity sheet questions. And for us, we're still doing them together. And so that would be here. And so here's the activity sheets. And so that first day from the magic school bus day, we would be answering these one, two, and three questions. So it's actually a decent amount of questions and to work through. There's one that is write it out and so we would discuss it and then I might either write it down for them or I'll make a check mark or sometimes depending on the day, if we have a little bit more space, I'll just give it to my kids and tell them I don't really care how they spell but I want them to try to answer these questions. And here and here you can see they're kind of more write it out, write in complete sentences sort of idea but I'm more interested in their understanding than their grammar, you know what I mean? And then here it's actually a chart to fill out. And so that's an example of one day's worth of questions. So that's a good overview until it gets to the discover and do. And for us, we have that extra day five science book. And there's always a little extra in here. And I love having this in the teacher's guide because it adds to it. Sometimes either one of these books says something and maybe a little too simplistically and the instructor guide just really helps me with that. And then there's also the answers if you need them, which sometimes I do and I'm a scientist and I'm just like, I'm not quite sure where this is going, but it's nice to have those answers. So that shows you a bit about how much reading you would do per day if you were doing history Bible literature level C as well as a science level C through sunlight. So let me just flip the camera around and give you some of my concluding thoughts. So welcome back, you guys. I hope that was helpful. I hope you got some tidbits out of that. I hope you were able to just kind of visualize or imagine yourself doing this program because I think that's what 
I find these types of videos help me with is they help me see like, okay, I think I could fit that in over snack or I think I could use this over lunch. It just kind of helps me see like how long the readings are because I think especially as you're going up in the levels in sunlight, the readings definitely get longer. And it's okay because my kids get older, but it still takes some thought and awareness as I'm planning out my day. Again, check out those other videos if you're interested in those levels. Comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys, especially if you are in the research season, which I am, as to what your thoughts are on some of these programs. But otherwise, like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you guys in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.